All right, a few things that I'm doing to the 96 Camaro is I put a low mount alternator on it. And again, this is a B body motor, so the hub sticks out further. So I had to shim. They only make these for F body Camaro, Firebird, Trans Am. But, um, so it didn't fit the B body hub. And, um, so I had to shim it out. Hopefully it's straight. I've measured the belt. I ordered the belt that comes with it, but then I remember I've got underdrive pulleys on both the crank and the alternator. So it's way too short. So I measured off the other belt to see what I need. But another thing I'm doing is manual brake install because with the cam that's in this car the brakes don't work that great either that or I just suck at bleeding brakes which could be a possibility because I suck at working on brakes I ain't gonna lie I changed that over to the ABS delete thinking the ABS was the problem but didn't make any difference at all so maybe the master seller just needs to bleed more I don't know but I'm not going to make a video on taking out that that uh, brake booster, which is sitting over there. It's brand new. I just did a, I thought maybe the brake booster was causing that. That brake booster ain't a hat six months old. But anyway, so I've got a video on that. But you do have to take your brake pedal out. Because when you do the manual brakes, you got to drill a 3 8 inch hole one inch above this center of the hole to center of the hole so that's what i'm working on now and there's just a big bolt and a nut that go on there and a, a shaft and it's got these two little plastic things that stick in each side to help it move but i've got this out and what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna try to drill a hole with these cheap drill bits i got one inch above right there so I'm just going to measure direct center and come one inch out. And then that's where I'm going to put the tip of the, the drill bit to drill into that. But I'm going to get started on that now. Alright, so per the instructions, I got the hole drilled. And my drill bits struggled to get through that. I wanted to go get some new drill bits. Oh, on a plus note, I got my heads back from Lloyd Ellett and they're all ready to go. But... I ordered Cometic, how to pronounce that, head gaskets, and they're not going to ship until the end of the month, so it's only like the 11th today, so I've got two and a half more weeks to wait on those. So I drilled the hole for that, and then over here, I'm going to bolt this up first. On the other side of that, it says firewall side, so stick it up there like that. And then I'll put the four screws in there. And since I'm by myself, I'm just going to put a piece of tape over those screws. And hopefully I can get the bolts. Hopefully I can get the nuts started from the other side. But I've, um, if you watched my video on the, uh, on doing the uh, brake booster, you'll notice I dropped the steering column and everything. It just makes it a lot easier to reach back there and get those nuts on them bolts I don't know if you can see it or not but it's there's one right there at the end of my finger and then there's one above that and there's one right there and one above that I'm going to put those in real quick alright so I got the screws in or the nuts on the bolts there and they got an Allen on the other side. It's not like doing a brake booster where they're fixed. So I'll have to have someone hold it from the other side so I can tighten those up so they're not tight. But I'm going to put the brake pedal in. You got these little plastic sleeves. They go in there. And you put those in there and then this bolt held it all in. It went in this side, went through the hole, and then the nut went on the other side. 
but I'm going to go ahead and put that in real quick. All right. I got the brick pedal in. And I tell you what. It was not easy. Holding that brake pedal. And putting that nut in at the same time. You can see up in there. Whew. That wore me clean out. Whew. So now the next thing to do is tighten up that plate for the master cylinder. Might have to get some help with that. So I was actually able to tighten all those up. I had a big Allen. And I just uh, wedged it in each one of them like that. And tightened it up. For a big long extension. Shoved all the way back in there. And I'm getting those tight. Alright, I got the brake booster in there. Tightened up. And that thing is going to be a nightmare <laughs> to change the fluid or to check the fluid and put fluid in it. That's not going to be fun at all. That thing sits way back there on these cars. Hmm. Oh well, I'm on. I got a brake bleeder kit or a master cylinder bleeder kit. So what I'm going to do next is, um, well first I got to hook the brake pedal up to that shaft so you want to pull the brake pedal all the way forward to the driver's seat and then there's one of those adjustable ends on on that rod and you want to screw that out until screw it out or in until it lines up perfectly with that hole with the brake pedal pulled all the way towards the front seat and then put the bolt in and tighten it up and once I get that I'm on See if I got the right size master cylinder bleeders to go in these holes and fill that up and run run the hose from here into each reservoir and then just pump the brakes and get all the air out of it. But that's that's next on the list. Now I got my brake pedal in and all tightened up. There's the Nut right there, and the bolt went through the other side because wasn't enough room on the other side, so the bolt has to go through this way, and the nut has to go on this side. And uh, I mean, it could have—I adjusted it. I took it out and in two or three times, and I could have adjusted it a little bit more, but there is a little bit of play there. And, uh, but the brake lights work perfect. I hooked the battery up just to test the brake lights, and the brake lights work perfect, so that's all good. And then on my brake bleeder kit, I screwed these little nipples in. And then I got the rubber hose in the kit, too. So the next thing to do is to fill this thing up and bleed the brakes. But I'm going to call it a night and do that tomorrow. So you just put fluid in there and run a hose from here into here. And the same thing on the back from here into there. And you just get in the car and pump, 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 pump the brakes. And it bleeds the, bleeds the master cylinder out. And then once you get it all bled, because i got to run lines from here to back there. Because... The lines that come off that are not long enough because the master cylinder come way out further before but here's the little rubber lines you use yep but i'm gonna do all that tomorrow oh yeah after you get the brake lines bled and you put these stoppers in and then once you get the brake line ran, you take the stoppers out, then you run the brake line. But I'm going to have to get some 3 16 brake line, I believe, is the size. And um, run it from the uh, proportioning valve and the front brakes. Run it from those right there. 
over to there and then got to bleed the brakes again I need new seats bad <laughs> but um I tightened the nut that locks the adjustable shaft in place <coughs> and I'll put these on here and the bleeding waking clip and I stuck them down in the holes there and I stuck them all the way down in there so on the return it couldn't get any hair And um, so you got to pump it until it quits shooting out air. And what I've been doing is putting the camera up here like this, making it balance itself and pumping the brakes and watching for watching for bubbles to come up. But I'm gonna do that a little bit more. Okay, so here I've got the camera kind of balanced on top of the the um, master cylinder looking down in the front hole, and you can see the air as it comes out of that top hole. Sometimes it'll come out of the top, the bottom hole, or even the hose that you got put in there, but uh, you'll see the bubbles clearly. Here's another video of the air coming out. You can see it a little bit better in this one. Another thing um, on this, when you're bleeding the brakes on the car, the master cylinder, make sure that these hoses stay submerged in the fluid. Because when you let off the brakes, they suck back a little bit. But um, I just had the lines chilling out like that. I put that rag down there keep brake fluid from getting everywhere but when I pump the brakes they don't really move but I thought about zip tying those to where they wouldn't move for sure but like I said they hadn't been moving so but yeah when you're doing this make absolutely sure that those stay submerged in fluid and uh, you can see the fluid level And this is what it looks like when no bubbles come out. And here's pumping the rear. And this is checking the back one for no bubbles. All right, so since it's all bled out now, what I did was I put these stopper plugs on there, put some plugs in there that the kit came with. 
and I put a, a new white rag I had laying around just to make sure nothing leaks but now when I hit that pedal also when you take take these out and put the stoppers in you're going to leak some fluid but it's not a big deal as long as you don't leak enough to let the reservoir go empty if you let the reservoir go empty you got to start all over and that's another thing on these plugs this front one it didn't screw in that well so got to make sure it don't leak those other things weren't leaking so if it leaks i'll just put those back on until i can go buy my line and flare it and route it and, and everything like that also need to check to see what kind of flare i need on the inside of that master cylinder which i probably should have already done that while i had it off but oh well but anyway those plugs in there we should have a really tight pedal tight 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 pedal let's see what we got oh yeah it don't even move yeah that's what we wanted if it had air in it it'd be spongy but no that's tight so that's what we want right there. Make sure we didn't squirt my foot out on this. Because I probably won't get the brake line. And do the brake line and stuff like that. Oops, sorry about that. Until. Don't look to be leaking. If I can find a clean finger. It's hard to wipe that crap off. Yeah, it's not leaking. Even after I pushed on the pedal. So yeah, good solid pedal. That's what we want. If there was any air in there, that pedal should have felt a little squishy. But no, it was. It didn't move at all except for a little bit of slack I have in there. Now, we run the rear brakes, which is this one. The, um, I already forgot what that was called. Proportioning valve, there we go. We run that to the back, and then we run the front one to this little T-block I got for the front brakes. So, they describe in the instructions here, if you're, um, if you're nothing but drag racing. Let's see what it says. Let's see if you can see it. Both outlet ports will supply the same pressure. The outlet port nearest the push rod supplies the most fluid volume and should be plumbed to the calipers requiring the most volume. Typically a drag race only car will have the largest calibers on the rear while a street driven car will have the largest calibers on the front. Attach lines accordingly. So we're street car. So, so the one nearest to the push rod, so the rear one needs to go to the front brakes. Yeah which is typical on the stock master cylinder. Yeah, the rear one went to the front brakes. So there we go. Check it out. Bitty bitty spider hanging out. But anyway, yeah, so the rear one, we got a plumb to the front brakes and then the back brakes are going to go to the front. And I'll probably, um, pick up some uh, brake line tomorrow. I'll probably get that done this weekend. Just I'm going to make absolutely sure it don't leak. So while we're waiting on everything, I will frequently come out here and check and make sure that's not leaking. Because like I said, it took... If, if I gravity bled this thing... It probably made things go a little bit quicker, but I didn't do that. I just put fluid in it 
and took off. But, uh, yeah, and it took a good 150 to 200 pumps. I was watching all these videos that said, you know, to try to see how long it takes. And the only, the only thing I could hear was, you know, 20 to 30 minutes. But, um, yeah, it took longer than that for this one. But uh, 150 to 200 pumps and smooth pumps. You just can't go bam, bam. You gotta go smooth in, smooth out. And make sure your lines that are going down in the reservoir do not come out of fluid. Because if they come out of fluid, it'll back suck air. You know, it's start all over. And never let your reservoir go empty. When you first start bleeding it, the reservoir goes down pretty quick. And then you just fill it up again after that. You don't really have to worry about it. Because it's just getting little bitty air bubbles out. But yeah, get some brake line this weekend. Run the brake line. And that'll call it good. And then I'll... Uh, I'll bleed the brakes. When I bleed the brakes, I'm going to start in the back rear, that side, passenger side, and then the driver's side. I'm going to do a gravity bleed first. And then I do this little method to where I run, I put fluid in this, just enough to fill the hole. About the same idea as doing the master cylinder. And you run this hose from the, uh, oops run that hose from the nipple on the caliper and uh, stick this down in fluid and you just pump the brakes make sure your reservoir don't go into you you have to start everything all over so you get an idea of how many times you can pump the brakes before you need to fill the reservoir up don't ever let it go low enough that that little bottom piece in the video starts sucking air down inside of it so but um, this technique works pretty good. Um, you can do it pretty easy by yourself. You just set this on the ground. I usually have that closed. And then put this on the nipple for the bleeder. Crack the bleeder a little bit, put that on the nipple. And just sit in the car and pump the brakes. Eventually, this will fill up. You'll have to use some of that. But I usually use two bottles and use one to fill up the reservoir and then one to bleed the brakes into but make sure this part this one will be connected to the nipple make sure it don't come off the nipple and make sure this part doesn't come out of the fluid or it'll back suck air but uh that technique works pretty good and i'll make a video on that but i use one to fill up the reservoir a brand new one and then one to catch it and then if the fluid that it catches still looks good which it should it's all new everything pretty much now but uh i'll just reuse the fluid so you don't lose any fluid and don't have to go buy a bunch of bottles but i'm gonna gravity bleed all of them first and then do that technique and that should do it but uh once i get the brake lines i'll i'll go through flaring i got a flaring kit not the greatest at it but practice makes perfect and i've had a little bit of practice now so hopefully I'll be able to do that good. And my head gasket should be here next week. I've got a video I'm making on cleaning the head surfaces. Cheese head surfaces ain't that bad. So I've already scraped this one a little bit. But uh, some uh, brake cleaner might just get the rest of that off of there. I scraped it with a razor blade. Just got to be real careful with the razor blade. If you get one of those reinforced ones like I've got, you know, they don't buckle as much. So, you know, if it buckles and goes crooked, it could gouge and scratch. Not very common on on uh, the iron, but um, on aluminum, especially if you're scraping on aluminum with a razor blade, you want to be very, very careful because you can gouge it easy. You got you too bad, you got problems. But anyway, that's where we're at. We'll start back up on this once we get the brake lines.